Hey guys, Mr. Griffith here, and in this video, I'm going to show you some practice tips for a couple of spots in Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Three. This is the first violin part. Um, the spot that I'm going to start off at is measure 80, and then I'm going to go up to about measure 90 or or, or so. There's a there's a couple of of shifting things in there, um, and so I'm going to play through that section first. And then I'll go back and kind of explain what I'm doing there. So this is measure 80, and I'm going to go a little, a little slow just so you can hear all the notes. One and two and three and four and... there's only two spots in there where you're going to make a shift happen. And so um, let me go back to measure 81. So there's a little, a little weird spot right here that we have to do with our third finger. And so I want to show you that up close. So in measure 81, you're going to do D, C sharp, D, and then E. I would absolutely use a fourth finger for these E's rather than open E. It'll just make doing, uh, making playing this a little bit easier so you don't have so many string crossings. I mean, we like it when we can eliminate some of those. So we have D, C sharp, D, E, and then we go back to D, and all I do is I kind of rock, let's see if I can show you, I kind of just rock my finger over to the A on the E string. Now you're gonna have to be really careful because when you rock your finger over, you don't wanna to end too, too low. You wanna make sure that, that you can still get that note in tune. And so when you, when you rock over, you're gonna kinda have to make sure that your finger is aiming a little bit more towards the bridge. That'll help to bring that note in tune. So just that measure by itself. And then you're gonna use that fourth finger for the B. In the next measure, uh, this is measure 82, that's where the shift is gonna happen. So let me show you that uh, in slow motion. So you're gonna play D. C sharp, then you shift. D is one. Okay, so let me show you that again. So we're gonna go D, C sharp, shift. So that's that. Once you're in the new hand position, this is third position with your first finger on the D, uh, then it's just a matter of adding the rest of the notes. So we have, uh, once again, we're starting in first position, D, C sharp, D, E, and then we go D again, C natural. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like. So here's D first finger, and then C natural is gonna be a half step higher than where your second finger is. So that's gonna sound like this. Kind of an odd combination of notes right there. And then you're gonna go D again, And then you're going to play that octave D right there with your fourth finger. And just listen carefully so that you can make sure that your Ds are in tune. And you may have to go back, back and forth a couple of times just to make sure that your fourth finger is in the right spot. So the trick to practicing this little section is slow. And I would do staccato bows just so that you can, you can figure out where exactly that shift is supposed to happen. Um, the next spot is at measure 86. And so what happens here is that you've got a C natural, so you've got a low two, and then B, A. Now notice when I play that A, my fingers are up in the air. The reason for that is because when you start this next section of eighth notes, you're gonna shift all the way into third position. And so you wanna use that open A 
to shift. And so here's, here's what that's going to look like in slow motion. So we have the C, and then B, A, shift, G. So again, that's C, B, A, G. Now, once you're in third position here, you're going to stay there for about two and a half-ish measures. And so I'm going to go through the, the note names here. We're going to, so we're on the G. And so all we do here, we do a, a G to a high G. And again, just listen carefully for the intonation of those Gs. So here I am, first finger on the D string, whoops. And then fourth finger for the G on the A string. And then the next one, I'm going to put my second finger down for the A. So I have A, G. Notice my fourth finger hasn't moved. Then I'm going to put my third finger down. See, now I'm, I'm, my fingers are getting really, really close together. They're kind of like a half step away, even though they're on two different strings. This is B, G. Now this next finger is going to go back. So you're, in, you're playing a C sharp. So you're going to kind of do like a low one. So rather than keeping your finger on the third tape, you're going to back it up. That's that low one position. So your first finger is on a C sharp, but your fourth finger is, is going to go back to the G. Another unusual sounding interval right there. And then the next, the next section, you're going to scoot your first finger up. So you're on the C sharp. Now you're going to scoot it up to D. And then you're just going to keep that first finger planted down, just like you did in, in the previous spot that we worked on. So we have D to F sharp, D again, G, fourth finger, D, rock your finger over to the A, back to D, second finger B, first finger D, third finger C natural, and again you want to make sure that your third finger is a half step away from that B, and then D again, and then high D. From there, you're going to stay in third position, play the B with a second finger, and then you shift back. And so let me play that, that little section again, <coughs> starting on the G first finger. So we have G, G, B, oh, I'm sorry, A, uh, let's start over, G, G, A, B, C sharp, D, F sharp, D, G, A, B, C natural, D, then B again, and then shift back. So that's it. Happy practicing, and let me know if you have any questions.